So there's a reason why cybersecurity jobs pay as much as they do, and that is because most people fail at learning cybersecurity. Now, why is this? Why does this happen? Well, it's actually very simple, and a long time ago I had, I would say, half of the puzzle, but the other half I didn't figure out until years later. So I want to save you guys a ton of time. Obviously, if you're doing what the average person is doing, you're going to get the average person's results. So let's change that up right now. And uh, basically what it comes down to is something that I talked about a long time ago on this channel, the compound effect, right? And there's more to it than just this first part. So bear with me for a second. But if you're not familiar with the compound effect, essentially it is that the actions that you take, the small actions, the small steps that you take each and every day compound and compound on each other, kind of like a snowball. If you imagine, you know, if you ever played with snow before, if you're not from Texas or Florida or one of those states, right? You've seen snow, right? You played with it. You, you know, you build a snowball and, you know, you start adding more and more snow to that. And as the snowball rolls farther and farther down the hill, it gains more and more snow. It gets larger and larger till suddenly you have a huge snow boulder, you know, maybe you make a snowman out of it or something like that, right? Now, the compound effect is basically that exact same concept, but applied to acquisition of skills, knowledge, learning stuff, right? Um, so if you apply this to cybersecurity, maybe you just spend, you know, an hour or a couple hours a day learning cybersecurity. And each day, you know, you feel like, ah, I didn't really learn too much, right? I learned this thing here and this other thing over there, but I'm still so far from my goals, right? But then what you find is that, over time, that does make a significant difference, right? Like imagine trying to get in shape. You know, you go to the gym one time, you don't notice any results. I mean, maybe you have a little bit of a pump going, but uh, you know, what happens a day later, right? The next day, you don't notice any results. You know, you even dial in your macros. After the first week, you probably won't notice any results. Maybe the scale doesn't even move. Um, a month later, you probably will start to notice some results. Two months later, other people will notice those results in you. Now, the major mistake that people make, for sure, I see this all the time, especially as I have clients now that I that I teach cybersecurity to and I help coach them and train them up. One thing I notice is that so many people fall into the trap of constantly comparing themselves to where they want to be as their end result. Now, it's really good to have goals, all right? absolutely have goals, but don't fixate on those goals. And I've, I've talked about this before, but you really want to make sure you avoid that mindset of every day looking in the mirror and being like, oh, I'm so far away from where I need to be to get a job in this field or, you know, to become a red team or whatever your goal is. Because yeah, that might be the case today. But if you can just keep compounding, compounding with this stuff. Now there's a, there's a saying, a Japanese saying essentially translates to even specks of dust can become a mountain. And that's something that we really have to keep in mind as we're learning this stuff, as we're pursuing it, because it's going to feel like, yeah, you're just going to be adding specks of dust each and every day. But, you know, compounding that over, you know, a long time, say a year, maybe multiple years, that is actually those specks of dust are going to add up to something pretty significant. And this was exactly how my own journey went in cybersecurity. I just put in the time each and every day. And let's be honest here, we're not perfect, right? No no one here is superhuman. We're all humans here, right? You're you're going to have days where you don't put any time into it, right? It's going to happen. It's not a matter of if, it's a matter of when. But what you got to do is you don't want to have that all or nothing personality or you know, all or nothing mindset. It's not really a personality because it's something you can change about yourself, right? It's not an identity. You can change that, right? If you do notice that tendency in yourself. What matters the most is not these Herculean efforts, right? That you that you put in like 12 hour days in cybersecurity one time and then you don't touch it again till like another week goes by, right? I mean, that that's a way worse strategy. You wanna be consistent, okay? You wanna be very consistent about, you know, putting in your cybersecurity study time. And it will add up to something significant. And I noticed that in my own journey. I didn't notice on the day-to-day -day the changes, but then months later, years later, I saw significant improvement. Even in the last year, I've been putting in so much time, I've noticed so many improvements. Now, here is where I got it wrong 
back in the day a couple years ago when I made a similar video on this topic, the compound effect. Um, it's not just a matter of consistency. Yes, those small actions over time add up regardless, but if it is a very, very small action, then it's going to take a lot of time to, to get to, you know, if you have a lofty goal, to reach that goal, right? So really, it's time and volume, okay? It is putting in a lot of time and being consistent about that. Um, now, like I was saying, you can still get to your goal if you put a very short amount of time, but you're very consistent. It's just going to take a lot, you know, a lot longer time period for, for you to achieve that goal, right? Now, if you're just starting out, if you're watching this video, you're just starting out in cybersecurity, you know, don't beat yourself up about this. Take the, the smaller approach, right? You're better off doing an hour a day for a month than eight hours a day for like one or two times a week, right? You're better off having the consistent approach over the, I'm just going to do a ton of hours and then not touch this again for a while approach. But yeah, eventually I think that even, you know, you look at people that learn instruments, right? They take the same approach, right? It, it, like when I was learning cello, they recommended just putting in 15 minutes a day of practice in the beginning. And then when you see people that have reached a pretty high level of proficiency on the instrument, they're putting in like three hours a day or even six hours a day if they're like a professional cellist, right? So this is this, a similar approach is how you want to, take on cybersecurity as well. So if you're completely new to this stuff, maybe you just put 30 minutes a day, an hour a day, whatever is doable for your schedule, right? And then as you gain more proficiency in this skill set and you're able to spend those longer hours on this stuff and you're really feeling fulfilled in that and you're learning, you're growing, then yeah, sure, put in those maybe three hours a day or two hours a day or even more, depending on your schedule and what your goals are and all that stuff, of course. And you will get there faster. But when it comes down to it, if you, if you find yourself trying to put in a ton of hours into this stuff, but you can't stick to it because you hate it, it's awful, then that is an indicator that you need to dial back the amount of time you're putting in each day so that you can be 100% consistent, dialed in. And, you know, if you need to take some breaks, that's fine. But don't take major long breaks consistently. Make sure that you're being consistent overall in the macro sense. And then as a result, in the macro sense, you will develop this skill set. And once you do develop this skill set, you're definitely going to reach that point where it's time to start applying for jobs. So go ahead and check out in the description below the link to my top 10 pen testing interview questions that you need to know to just ace those interviews absolutely for free. Uh, check that out. And I have some more technical content on the screen for you guys right now as well. I'll see you guys right over there. Thanks for watching.